to, to sink to those depths that he sunk to. Once you start going down, man, yo, Stevie O, after he went down, he was, I see him sitting on the porch with us, he ain't got no car, this and that way, no people drive. He, he still had name and recognition and this and that, and he could still get motherfuckers to move, but he, ah, oh, it was terrible to see, man. You know, I'm glad I seen it. Once he was on them drugs, Stevie will be up there two, three days. Niggas will be coming through the hood looking for him and trying to get on, and he wouldn't even come out. You know what I'm saying? He'd be up there three days. Then when he come out, he got the raccoon eyes, and I'm like, damn, Stevie O, it's over? Is it over? It's bad. Then you got to chill out with the same niggas you used to tell shut the fuck up. And then you, then he wasn't eating plug. Then he had the plug. I was like, oh, this nigga plugged at 35. Oh, Stevie O, they got him doing shit. You know what I'm saying? But everybody know me. Everybody know once I'm on the job, whatever I'm doing, I'm going all the way. All the way. So I'm taking over everything. And I probably wouldn't have lived. I would have been locked up. But something bad would have happened to my family and this and that. Because that's what happened to his. Oh, baby. Everything that he touched, that he touched, sour. Killed, but nobody getting killed before he found everybody loved each other this and that. Next you know, niggas getting killed, family niggas getting killed, nephews, nieces getting popped, you know what I'm saying? Cousins, and friends getting killed, shot in the head, all that. That came from Stevie, one of the nicest guys on the block. You understand me? One of the nicest, you would look, you would want to be that guy. From the yay to the dog food. Once he got to the dog food, he got on the dog food. He, I don't think he fucked with the yay, but he got on that food. The food gave you strength, it gave you energy, it gave you arrogance. It make you strong. It make you feel like you're invincible. It's what I heard, cause I ain't did it but one time. I don't even think I ain't even got in my system like that. Well, maybe my shit was strong, but one time I did it. But this is what they tell me to do. Make it, make it wee wee home. You know what I'm saying? I said, oh, there's got to be another way to have happiness. Stevie did me a favor two times. The first time, he didn't let me get on with the uh, with DA. And then the second time, he got over on me on with the dog food. Now, he knew the outcome of both of those things. He knew what it was going to do. He, I don't know. He just kept me out of the game, and that was a big favor. But at the time, oh, man, I lost all respect for Steve Yo. But now, I hold him up high for not putting me in the game to where if I would have had a club club. You understand? Once I got a plug, I was gone. Even though he played me like that ball, and I was hot. I was mad at the motherfucker, Steve. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing to him because he's family, you know? And he gonna let him play me like I was a hoe. I, I, I wasn't too motherfucking keen on that shit. So I, I just stayed away, you know what I'm saying? Trey was locked up, you know, at the time when it went down. You know, everything was going motherfucking haywire with that when I got back from the service. So. He come, I, you know, I laid up here later on. I haven't got married, right? And I'm living in Detroit. You know, that was the best move I ever made in my life. You know what I'm saying? Because one, not just to get away from the hood, you know, I was able to get in touch with my creative self. You know, I don't think I would have got in touch with my creative self. I still think I would be on the aggressive side in Chicago. I'm still aggressive. But I'm not like that aggressive. I'm, you know, trying to turn it into art now. You know, without my aggression in the art. You know, that's my type of psychology for myself. You know what I'm saying? So, check it out. He come on down to Detroit. 
I see him. I'm at the uh. I'm over there on Nine Mile and Greenfield. I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah. On Greenfield. Right there. And uh, they cut Stevie a walking through the door. Do where you know where the diamonds and shit at. You know what I'm saying? I was doing something over there. Oh yeah, I was uh. Trying to pimp them for a couple dollars, they ain't no more for the hookup, you know. But yeah, let me get back to that. Let me tell you what you mean. But man, I was mad at this nigga, man. It's like, nigga, you gonna take my motherfucking heart on, man. I cranked on that money, man. Shit. But, uh, I see him in that thing. I see him at the diamond spot, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? It's just Stevie O. What you up here doing, baby? It's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm still in the back of my mind. Where my motherfucking money, man? You motherfucking goddamn got me, but, you know, I ain't even hit him like that. I just was like, what up, man? He's like, man, I'm down here, man, doing a little diamond switch room and shit. I'm getting like 30, 40,000 to pop. You know, I said, oh, 30, 40,000 to pop? Yeah, I'm getting them clear boys checking out. He gave me a look at him. Who out the band? He said, yeah, I'll get in there and motherfucking do my thing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, that's what you're doing now? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his habit was so out cold that, you know what I'm saying, he would blow thirty, forty thousand dollars in a couple of days, two, three days. He, that's how he got down. You know, he making that much money. It's a hard come down from when he was woo wop to woo wop, but you still a woo wop hooker. You know, you go, you on woo wop. I want. You know what I'm saying? I got half and still you at woo wop. You know, you can't be at woo wop and still. Be trying to get at the wop. So he getting thirty, forty thousand dollars to hook up a motherfucker switcheroo and he and he blowing all through that with the quickness, you know what I'm saying? He's like, Yeah, I just hit him that. I said, What? Yeah, yeah, you know how I run through that money, I get that shit. You know, so I said, Yeah, I'm gonna, I gave my number, I plug up, you know what I'm saying? But I never called, you know what I'm saying? You know when your man come to town. I didn't call him. This is my man Steve, yo, I love this nigga man, but he played me like a whole show. I was like, nigga. No, oh, nigga, that ain't cool, man. You know what I'm saying? The only reason this shit, motherfucker, I let it go, cause we fam, nigga. You know. So, a couple months later, two, three months later, Trey, he in Florida, right? He in Florida, and he gave me a call. I'm in Detroit. You know. He said, man, they and Steve, yo, is uh in the hospital down there, man, fighting for his life. I said, what? I said, yeah, man. Some they said. They said some other uh, some niggas left him in the alley for dead. I said left him in the alley for dead. Damn! I'm gonna need you to go pick him up from the hospital. I'm like Trey. Man, you know, man, I just told him, man, hey, man, Stevie, yo, put play me like yo, oh, man, go get my brother, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, go get my brother. You know, we linked up. Now you tell me, I was I was at a dilemma. You know, I was like, man, I already linked. Already, because simple fact, I, you know what I'm saying? I didn't do nothing, I just walked away. Now I gotta go pick him up. Man, nobody could get him, man. Can't nobody come get him. I was in a dilemma because this nigga had played me like a hoe. But you know what I did? I had to pull off that energy that I had for that nigga when I first was looking up to him when we were short as he used to do us all. And it's, you know, I had to feel that energy and I said, you know what? And I kind of threw the edge off so I can go pick him up. He's like, oh, go get him, man. You don't, you don't want to Detroit. I said, all right, Trey. You know what I'm saying? I could have spent him, but I, w I gave him my word. So I went on down to me and the wife and, uh, and uh, uh, my neighbor downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Because she was babysitting, so she came with us, you know? So we go to pick him up. Steve, yo, come up for the hop. I, I pull up the uh, receiver. And uh, I'm looking for him. He said, man, I'm outside. He called me. I'm like, dog, I don't see you nowhere, man. Where you at? I'm on my phone. But he called me from off uh, of a payphone. We still have payphones, too, man. I was like, where you at? The nigga start hopping by me with the crutches. Now, this nigga, granted, he. About 6'3, you know what I'm saying? 2, 240, 250, you know what I'm saying? 240, 250. The last time I seen him, like two months ago. Two, three months ago. Now he come by, man, this nigga was like, 
like real then, man. I didn't even know it was me. He's like, bro, come on, man. I'm right here. I said, Steve, yo, damn. And everything that I was tripping on went out my head. I was like, man, fuck that money, man. Where you need to go? You know what I'm saying? He said, man, can you just buy me a burger? I said, buy you a burger, dog. I guess maybe he was testing the water because he would be playing with that way. You know what I'm saying? I'm answering too much. But I might mean, shout out to this joint, man. Get out what you gonna eat, man. You know what I'm saying? We watch the man then. After that, he told me the streets. I shot out to Highland Park. I think it was in Highland Park. But anyway, he was taking me in hoods, man. And uh, when I'm looking around, and I'm like, what the fuck, nigga? Who, who you trying to go get? Where you trying? Where you living at? You know this and that. You know what I'm saying? You know, so he going over where he was, a spot where his bra was at, but she wasn't there. Another spot, she wasn't there. I said, what is this nigga doing? This nigga. And I'm looking at the people there around that bitch, like, uh, you know, women in that bitch, you know. I'm like, oh, dog, this nigga got me motherfucking searching around for some motherfucking work. Ain't this a bitch with my wife in the car? The baby and my motherfucking uh, goddamn neighbor. They don't even know how I'm cut at all. I got a whole new persona. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what? Like I say, you when you see somebody like that, come down to he was this one. You know what I'm saying? Now he, you see him come down like that, you like, damn, it was good for me to see. It stopped me from cutting corners and doing shit and, and walking on. I'm like, dog, cause man, you see the same people coming down and they might not be like me. They gon' pick you up. Uh -huh. But, you see, I, you know, I, mean, I was on my knuckles, man, and those people on that block, they aid and assist me on my movements, man. You know what I'm saying? They got, they had love for me. They sure fuck did. You know what I'm saying? And we moved the crowd. You know, they got me up out of there and they got me when I got into another frame because I had to decompress out in the service. Oh my goodness. Whew. I had to decompress. Nigga, I've been doing street shit since motherfucking. Oh, and I was a terrible nigga. I had to. Man, discipline? Oh. <laughs> man, that's another story. But, you know, since you're not carrying me love, I'm going to get him. That's what we do. We gon' get each other. Love. Hit that cash app up. Matthias Harris. Folk man would appreciate it. Immensely. Thank you in advance. With the help out with the show.